Today on the Union Road Wine Trail, we're happy to have had an interview with one of the owners of Molloy O'Neill, one of the older wineries in the Paso Robles area. Now he holds a degree in both biochemistry and fermentation science, which makes him quite an expert in the area and the soil and condition and the growing region of the Paso Robles area. Hi, I'm Shannon O'Neill. I'm the winemaker and owner of Malloy O'Neill Vineyards here in Paso Robles. Uh, we are uh, getting ready for harvest here, and uh, we just finished Verasion, which is uh, the grapes turning from green to red, and from that point we have about two months, so it's kind of crunch time right now. I should start seeing some grapes in about a month. Um, with the Chardonnay and some of the Merlots and the Pinots starting to get ripe. Um, it's usually about eight weeks after complete verasion when all the clusters and all the grapes in the entire field are have turned from green to red. You can see our property out here. It's a, it's an 80 acre parcel. It's a quarter mile by half mile and you can see we have a, a large uh, Windy Hill cab um, block right here is about 12.9 acres and then we have over in the back there we have three acres of Syrah it's the French clone from Chateau Beaucastel and uh, uh, in front of it in the other three acres is the French clone of Pinot it's a Dijon clone from uh, Klaus Vougeot in Burgundy and um, even though they say Pinot can't grow in Paso it's not true it grows really great here and some of the wines that we're producing from the Pinot is just outstanding. Um, and as a matter of fact, we have a little festival here each year. Um, it's called Pinot and Paella, where the 13 or so Pinot producers in Paso all get together and the chefs in town all compete for who has the best Paella. And it's really uh, an interesting uh, event because uh, there's so much food and um, a lot of the wines we pour um, are really good with, with the paella. So um, basically we've, um, we're have we gearing up, we're cleaning equipment, we're getting ready for to get out there and start picking and once that happens um, it, the, the rest of the season is like a blur. You just wake up and it's, it's December and um, you hope everything went okay. So, so far this year it looks really good. Um, we had a, a bad frost last year, so we had kind of a really light crop. This year it looks really good, and it's uh, the summer's been pretty mild all in all, but um, we've had a, lot, a little hot streak here in the last month, and it's really kind of progressed and forward a, a lot faster. So I think it's going to be an early year. I think it's going to be pretty uneventful, I hope, as far as weather and um, the other factors go. but. Uh, I can feel it because I'm, I'm stressed right now and I'm starting to get nervous and I can tell that um, time is of the essence so I need to like get into gear and start doing what I need to do to, to be mentally prepared for the harvest so um, yeah that's where we're at right now but uh, from up here on top of the hill it's a beautiful panorama this is about the highest spot here on the east side in Paso um, you can see over there we have Falcon's Nest and Pear Valley some of our neighbors um, over here we have the Steinbecks, that's a, a really uh, big piece of property there, it's about 600 acres or so and uh, they're really great neighbors to have. They have a little educational piece over there with the wine yard where Cindy, the uh, daughter who runs the operation here now, is, uh, does educational classes on how to grow premium wine grapes in Paso, which is really what we're talking about when um, of why Paso is so great as far as wine goes. Um, besides just the geographical and the natural um, and the soils part of, the, uh, of growing grapes, um, we have a long rich history here in Paso Robles um, starting from you know the late 1900s all the way up through Prohibition and up until now of just um, kind of a free spirit uh, pioneer type rugged uh, different type of grape growing than let's say Napa or down south in Temecula. Um, this is kind of uh, uh, a little bit more 
adverse as far as the weather and the soils make up and growing grapes is a little bit harder and you know the, the French say the vines must suffer to make good wine and that's kind of how it is here in Paso in that we do have nutrient deficient soils that um, that that lend to a good makeup for grape growing. We have um, one of the largest diurnal fluxes of um, uh, of any grape growing regions and in that I mean the difference between the nighttime and daytime temperature is is very high and as a matter of fact San Miguel which is right over there you can kind of see it from here in those mountains over there has I think the, one of the largest diurnal temperature flux in the world I believe I know in the United States but it's you know I think it's 67 degrees or something like that it's a, it's the difference between the um, between the, the coolest nighttime temperature and the hottest daytime temperature. And here in Paso, even in the summer when it's 110 degrees, 105, it'll be hot over hundreds and it'll be 55, 60. So that's a big delta there that really lends to the high quality grapes that we can grow here and that it lends for a good sugar acid balance um, compared to, let's say, the Central Valley, which is hot days and hot nights and uh, the acids never develop so you get kind of a flabbier kind of weaker type of, of wine or used for cold wines. You will find Malloy O'Neill's right in about the middle of the Union Road wine trail and when you're there stop in and say hello and you'll receive a map of the Union Road and free wine tasting at all the wineries along the Union Road, plus a discount on all the wine you purchase when you're on the Union Road.